What's up guys, it's me your girl Cat Corelli and this is episode 251 of my Cat Vibes series. Today we're gonna be painting no other than the Beanie Man himself, the famous fence sitter, the milk toast liberal, the guy who complains, complains on the internet, the beacon of podcastery for the millennial generation, I guess. Temple. Temple himself. I decided that I really want to paint portraits of people who... who are of some significance to me in these past um, four years. So that would include Joe Rogan, uh, that would include Tim Paul, apparently, because I'm, I'm still watching Tim Paul occasionally. Tim Cast IRL, and I want to encourage you to go and check out his show if you don't know who Tim Paul is. I think he's one of the best journalists out there. I like him for actually reporting on the news. I like him for using verified, verified sources, actually verified sources and cross-verified sources. Um, and while, quite frankly, to many people he might appear like a fence-sitting liberal, I, I don't see it that way. I think he gives things the benefit of the doubt. I think he is trying to be as honest as he possibly can in his assessments, and he's trying to hold back his bias, whatever biases he has. Because, you know, everybody got their biases. So, that's precisely why I was following Temple for a while now, and uh, I've been sharing his content, and I've been recommending it to my friends, and um, I just think he's cool. So I think, you know, painting a portrait of Tim Pool was something that, you know, for me it was just a matter of time. Sooner or later, I wanted to paint him alongside other people who uh, were or are of some influence um, in these past four years. So you've seen my paint through of Joe Rogan. I absolutely had to paint Joe Rogan because, I mean, how can you go... <laughs> I mean, Joe Rogan is a freaking celebrity. Uh, you gotta paint the guy. He's cool. He's cool. I like Joe Rogan. Some people don't. I like him a lot. Um, and he's quite the character. Tim Pool is quite the character and he's a very recognizable character. Uh, that beanie of his only adds to his recognizability. He's a freaking character. So he was just, you know, in my mind, he was kind of just asking to be painted. You look at the guy and you're like, yeah, this guy needs to be, needs to be in a portrait. Um, on a side note, I think I should say that, you know, since I painted Joe Rogan and I've painted Tim Pool, I think I also probably should paint Jordan Peterson because that's another guy that, you know, I've been watching um, a lot back in 2018 and 2019, and um, I should say that Jordan Peterson, I first kind of got into him and Joe Rogan back in 2018 while I still lived in Moscow, and then from there on I had a whole bunch of questions about a whole lot of things, and while at the time I did not necessarily agree with you know, the thesis that, you know, Jordan was putting out. Uh, but it piqued my interest and it forced me to kind of go and explore. Um, then I started to listen to a guy called, gosh, what's his name? Sapolsky, I believe. He had a video, a lecture actually, on clinical depression. So that was interesting and quite revealing. So Jordan Peterson, definitely. I, I think I should paint Jordan Peterson's portrait. Find an interesting reference and um, just paint a good solid portrait of Jordan Peterson. Something 
approximately the size of this portrait, like Tim Pool, and approximately the size of Joe Rogan, which is... Gosh, I wish I could remember what's the ratio here, but it's roughly 20 by 21 inches, something like this. So, I think Jordan Peterson should be the next. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of, you know, um, contemplating a list of people that I want to paint. Um, so, Joe Rogan, Tim Pool, Jordan Peterson, Blair White, maybe. 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 I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Because sometimes I feel like, yeah, back in the day in 2018, 2019, you know, Blair White was uh, quite an inspiration to me when I was starting my YouTube channel. And then I went into this whole trance topic and I started talking about that. And then, you know, last year I kind of rolled all of that back because I kind of realized that that's not really something that I want to be talking about. I'm not really that interested in that topic. I was interested at the time, and there were things that bothered me, and they still kind of bother me, but I guess I've learned a whole, you know, gazillion of things about a lot of things. And I kind of felt that that's too narrow of a topic for me to talk about. And that I kind of have to put things in perspective, and when I try to do that, it turns out that there are things that, I'm, that I haven't been even aware of. So. I kind of, you know, stopped talking about those things. But in whichever case, uh, Blair White was an inspiration, in a sense. So, I don't know. I don't know, should I paint a portrait of Blair White, or should I not paint a portrait of Blair White? I kind of don't know. Another portrait that I'm contemplating is Alex Jones. I know he's a very controversial figure, but I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking through this list, and if there is someone who you can come up with, especially if there is a portrait that you would like to, that you would like to commission with me, tell me. Like maybe you want, some of you, maybe you want me to paint Blair White, and you want to buy that portrait. I will be happy to do that reach out and tell me. It looks like I'm pretty booked for the time being as far as, you know, what exactly am I going to paint as far as landscapes and portraits and that kind of thing. Um, there is a really big project that I'm looking forward to and that is uh, Sargon of a Cad. I will be painting a big uh, bigger painting, and quite frankly, I don't even know how am I going to go about this. I'm kind of, you know, thinking about this for like a a month already, or maybe two months. It's going to be a difficult one. Um, I have a whole bunch of landscapes that I want to paint, and you know, series actually, whole series of landscapes, and I'm actively working on it right now. Mm. But there are also portraits that I want to paint, and. Uh, I will be painting a portrait of one of my friends, and then there is gonna be yet another portrait. So I kind of sort of know that I want to paint uh, Jordan Peterson, maybe Blair White, but I'm not sure. I want to hear your suggestions. Tell me if there is someone, some celebrity perhaps, or you know, someone you like, whom you would want me to paint, especially if you would want to buy that portrait. If you want to commission a portrait with me, uh, go ahead and let me know. Um, also, I want to inform you that uh, both the portrait of Tim Pool and the portrait of Joe Rogan are on sale. They are available. Uh, it will still take some time for both of them to fully dry, but if you really like these portraits and you want to um, get either of one, either of them, uh, reach out to me, leave me a comment, or reach out to me on my email, ladycatherinecorelli at gmail.com, and let's talk about it. 
if you want me to paint someone else, if that's someone, again, tell me about it. But there are portraits that I want to paint anyways, like uh, Jordan Peterson. Not sure about Blair White. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I'm kind of Tim pooling on this one. <laughs> Let's see. Chris Fornatero, the painter, the painting coach. That's the guy that I was thinking about. I was thinking maybe I should paint him. Mm. I like the guy. He's colorful. Um, I like him. And I'm thinking about others. Like, I don't know about Alex Jones. Not sure about that one. Maybe, maybe not. Um, that's something I'm working on. But back to Tim Pool. I think Tim Pool absolutely deserves a portrait. Because I gotta say that he had quite the influence on my channel. My inquiries. On my line of inquiry. On my thinking. And uh, on my assessment of, generally speaking, what is going on. Through Tim Pool, I've discovered a lot of people. I've discovered, um, well, no, kind of. I started watching the We Are Change channel with Luke Rutkowski, Rutkowski a while ago, because of the Yellow Vest movement. And then it was a pleasant surprise to discover that Luke frequents uh, Tim's show. That was interesting. And um, Tim just had you know, a lot of people and um, he was giving them a platform to speak up. And I think that's cool. Um, you know, the latest um, people and people who showed up at Tim Pool's uh, in some capacity, were people like Vivek Ramaswamy. I think that's pretty awesome. And, um... So I think Tim is doing a wonderful job, and I think he absolutely deserves a portrait. See, I kind of changed his face a lot here. I started out with one thing, and then I realized that... I kind of went in the wrong direction, I think, in the very beginning. And then I tried to rectify that, because there was something about the eyes that was wrong. It was not in place. Uh, something in the look on his face was off. I mean, technically, I know what it was. It's, you know, the wrong angle. The eyes, the eyes were kind of not really there, not his eyes, and then the nose was really not his, so... I gotta tell you, I spent, what, three weeks on this painting. I was painting basically every day. I started this painting in December, and it carried through early January, basically. So let's say that this portrait took me quite some time. And quite frankly, I didn't know to what degree of realism did I want it to go. Did I want to push for more detail and more refinement? Or did I want to keep it loose? And I kind of ended up with something in between because it's not a hyper-realistic portrait, really, and not even close, and it's not even too realistic, I think. I think that it's kind of impressionistic still, but fairly realistic. First, I thought I was gonna keep it loose, but I think right after the initial stage, I kind of quickly realized that that's not where I'm going, and that I actually want to tighten it up more and more and more until I actually see what I want to see. And... I think it doesn't really matter. What matters is that... 
Yeah, you can see it's temple. And uh, I wanted to convey a certain vibe, I wanted to convey a certain facial expression and uh, something in the eyes that makes him distinctly him. That's what I wanted to capture and uh, translate into oil. I kind of sort of thought that I would finish this painting sooner and that I would stop earlier. But then I started to tighten up the face, as you can see, and, uh, you know, Tim has a few items in his studio. He has the guitar, and there's a mic, and there's a sword, and there's a gun, and there's a painting, and there's something like that. So, first I thought that I can just kind of, you know, put him, you know, use some neutral background. But then I thought, you know, since I'm picking his headphones and the mic stand, that mic arm, whatever it is, then why not paint the guitar? And then probably I should also paint the sword and the gun and that other painting in the back, you know, to kind of keep it all congruent. Otherwise, it, I don't know. Otherwise, I feel that it, it, it would be like a half ass job somehow. I think I was also kind of overly cautious with a lot of elements here. Well, it is a portrait. So, you know, things that can be forgiven in a landscape cannot be tolerated in a portrait. Um, so I think he, he has to be recognizable. He has to have a distinctive look on his face. The viewer has to be able to definitively tell that this is Tim Pool, that it's not some other dude from somewhere. That it's not Joe Rogan, of all people, that it's not Luke Rutkowski, that it's um, Tim Pool. That it is his studio, that these are his headphones, and that, you know, so that everybody knows what he does, and he is a journalist. So. He has a studio of his own, so he's supposed to have his own mic. And since he has a studio of his own, we gotta paint that studio. Speaking of portraits and environment, I think I kind of see exactly how I would paint Jordan Peterson. I can imagine that. And I'd be probably painting him in one of his uh, more extravagant suits. But if I was to entertain the possibility of painting a portrait of Blair White, I wouldn't know, really, <laughs> what to use for reference and where to go. But I don't even know if I want to paint a portrait of Blair White, quite frankly. And uh, I know that there is a ton of celebrities out there, that there are a ton of people, you know, who are making a lot of noise. Oh, one of those people who makes a lot of noise that I definitely want to paint. And again, that's going to be a very specific portrait. I think I want to paint Corey Taylor from the Iowa era. I'm not quite sure if I want to paint him with the mask or without the mask, or maybe I, maybe I want to paint two portraits. One, I want to paint him with the mask, the Iowa era mask, with the dreadlocks. Uh, if you ever watched the Disaster Pieces on DVD, I think you might know what I'm talking about. Well, if you're a Slipknot fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not a Slipknot fan, you wouldn't know that. So. Um, but I think Corey is a very colorful character, and uh, it's almost like there's a different side in him when he's wearing a mask, and that specific mask from the Iowa era, somehow I love that mask a lot. 
Um, I know that Corey was going through a lot of stuff at that time, but the Iowa album still resonates with me a big deal. I love that album. It's brutal. It's ruthless. It's batshit crazy. It's heavy. It's dark. I love that album. Um, so Corey Taylor is another candidate and I think I definitely want to paint his portrait. Now with Corey, I think I would go for a masked portrait and then I would paint him without a mask. I think I would do both. And uh, yeah, I think that would make sense. Like he's a celebrity, but he's kind of a very specific celebrity. You know, not everybody knows Corey Taylor. You know, not every not everybody likes Slipknot. Plus, recently Slipknot has become a highly controversial band, so to speak, and that's speaking very mildly. Uh, I wish there was less controversy attached to uh, Slipknot in these recent years. I kind of feel sad about a lot of this. If you know what I'm talking about. All of these departures and, you know, first it was Paul Gray, then Joe Jorgensen, which sucks. It really sucks. I love that drummer. I love Joe Jorgensen. I always liked him. And I mean, I'm well familiar with, with Mangini, for example. And Mike Portnoy. Mike Portnoy was probably the first drummer who really impressed me and that, you know, when I was getting into this kind of music, I was getting into metal music and all sorts of music back in the early 2000s. Mike Portnoy was one of the first ones whom I discovered and I was blown away. And then there is, of course, a lot of others. But uh, Joey, Joey Jordison, I felt so bad for the guy just... I, I really felt bad for that. But, you know, on top of all of this, now Jay Weinberg departed Slipknot for whatever reason, and I kind of hated that Slipknot would never be upfront about their reasons, and they would never actually clearly convey the message. I know it's kind of confusing, there's a lot of controversy going around, you know, and fans speculating about what is actually going on with Slipknot. I don't know. Um, I just like the music. And uh, Slipknot had seen me through some of my darkest hours in my life. In my darkest chapters. And uh, I'm grateful for having this band, you know, alongside other bands. And uh, I want to paint Corey Taylor. His voice meant a lot to me, personally. So, Corey Taylor is another candidate, and um, I think it's pretty clear what kind of vibe, what kind of environment is going to be there. With Jordan Peterson, it's pretty clear. With Blair White, I don't know if I ever get to that. Am I going to paint her? Am I not going to paint her? I don't know. Who else? I feel like probably I want to paint Chester Bennington, because he, too, was a huge influence on me. And generally speaking, the reason why I'm gonna paint all these people, just like I'm paint, painting Joe Rogan and Tim Pohl, the people who've seen me through these past four years, um, and there are others like Scott Ritter, for example. I think I want to paint his portrait as well. Um, it's because they are important to me. I know there's a gazillion of celebrities and all sorts of people out there who are like, you know, Hollywood actors and. Uh, singers and uh, artists and politicians. Hell, I painted Donald Trump. <laughs> I think he's an exceptionally, uh, ex exceptionally colorful character. It doesn't matter if you like him or you don't like him, but he's just freaking colorful. Um, but you know, I kind of you now unless it's a commission, of course. I just feel that there are people whom I definitely want to paint because they had an impact on my life because in one way or another they were present in my life 
musicians, artists, podcasters, all sorts of people, thinkers. So, I think I roughly kind of kind of blocked out the list of people that I want to paint and ah, it's going to be a lot of painting but I'm looking forward to it and each one of them is going to be challenging in their own way now since I mentioned Joey Jordison and Mike Portnoy I thought well <laughs> then maybe I should expand my list and paint Joey Jordison and Mike Portnoy and also paint Jay Weinberg but then that opens a whole can of worms and then a reasonable question arises. Why not paint Jonathan Davis of corn? Why not paint um, Chris Cornell of Soundgarden? Why not paint Kurt Cobain of Nirvana? Because, I mean, all of these people were of influence on my life, on me as an artist, as a musical artist. Let's say the list goes on. For now, I do have a few ideas, and I think Tim Pool was at the top of the list. I actually don't think that this is going to be the only portrait of Tim Pool. I think I'll probably paint a different one, because I think that this one turned out kind of tight, a little too tight, a little, well, comparatively to what I thought it might turn out. compared to what I thought it might become because um, I wanted to keep it much much looser and it ended up I think a little too uptight not just tight but uptight I want to I think I already want to paint a different portrait maybe just not right now I don't know if I'm even gonna do that in the following months and maybe I will, we'll see. But like, there are other people that I want to paint as well, so I think in time I'll just, re I'll return to Joe Rogan and I'll return to Tim Pool eventually. In whichever case, if you want to commission with me, you know where to find me. LadyCatherineCorelli at gmail.com uh, reach out to me and we will discuss the details. Other than that, um, gosh, I'm recording this episode in the middle of the night, literally, and that's why I'm kind of speaking in this fry, fry, fry low voice. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to this whole episode and watching me paint. Thank you very much. Um, the next Cat Vibes is going to be yet another painting, I think, and then there's going to be probably yet another painting, and then we're going to go into a uh, guitar playthrough of the next song, Gala, Gala Dark Singer. And then after that, I think I'll have to adjust my schedule as far as uh, when the guitar playthroughs, the lyric videos are dropping, because there are singles that are yet to come. They're not yet released, so... Uh, I will hold them back, basically. But I already have a few paintings, a few paint throughs that I will be working on to make them into the next Cat Vibes. Thank you very much for being with me on this episode. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, feel free to share my content. I will really appreciate this. If you want a commission with me, reach out to me at, um, either in the comment section or at ladycatherinecrella at gmail.com and um, thank you very much for being with me I love y'alls and uh, that's it you'll hear me on the next episode